All right. What a wonderful night of fights. The Charlo Brothers pay-per-view was absolutely fantastic. Jamal Charlo beats the brakes off Sergey Deverinchenko and shows exactly why it is that Canelo Alvarez and Gennady Golovkin and other guys at 160 pounds want nothing to do with him. Let's talk about that, the fight, and let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. Man, Was n I've been done a lot of pay-per-views, very happy with that pay-per-view. That was a lot of fights, an excellent day of fights. Um, the fight we're going to talk about in this video is Jamal Charlo versus Sergey Devranchenko. It was the first of the two um, quote-unquote main events on the, on the uh, Charlo Brothers pay-per-view card. It was for the WBC uh, 160 pound or middleweight belt. And it was against Sergey Devranchenko, who at this point in time can be considered a, um, a perennial contender. He had also a uh, fought for the IBF title twice, once to Daniel Jacobs and the other to Gennady Golovkin. Most notably, uh, though he also was, uh, the mandatory for, uh, Canelo Alvarez and Canelo Alvarez was stripped of the IBF belt because he refused to fight Sergey Devranchenko. So, Sergey, a win over Sergey Devranchenko for Jamal Charlo is most definitely something that is that is a, a very credible win, and it is something that was the first. I think I really this is probably the second at 160 pound, 160 pounds the first real big step-up fight for Jamal Charlo at 160 pounds. Now, I think that he held, that he already had other step-up fights and proved what a fighter he is because of what he did with fighters, at because of what he did at 154 pounds when he was definitely the best 154 pounder that was there. I mean, with the possible exception of his brother, who is now, without a doubt, got to be considered one of the, the best 154 pound or after that devastating um, performance that he put on in the co-main event with um, winning all three of those belts from off of uh, Jason Rosario. Um, but as far as the fight with, um, with uh, Jamal and how it went with Sergey Devonchenko, they went pretty much how I thought it was going to go. Um, I wasn't, I, you know, I was like, it, if there was going to be a knockout, it would have been for Jamal Charlo, but I saw it going the distance because Sergey Devonchenko is a very, very tough fighter, but also, I thought that, you know, that Jamal Charlo was going to be able to control the fight with his jab, with the straight right hand, with the uppercut, with the lead hook. Well, not just the jab, but the lead uh, left hook as well. And that's pretty much, you know, what happened, man. It was um, Sergey Devonchenko is definitely, without a doubt, a very, very solid fighter. Um, very strong and super tough, man, because he absolutely, positively, man, just got the brakes um beaten off of him by Jamal Charlo, but he kept coming forward. He kept coming forward. He would take shot after shot after shot. It was actually, man, quite amazing to see this dude take all of that punishment. Um, the only thing that I think um, that was more, you know, uh, strange than seeing how much punishment uh, that Sergey Devranchenko could take was how uh, different Al Bernstein and um, Steve Farhood, and who else was covered? I think it was Abner Mars was also covering the fight. How different their take on what was happening in the fight was to mine. Because I was like, hold on, man. Do you not see that Sergey Devranchenko's face looks just like, you know, looks like a beat up steak? You know, he's a oh, man. He was looking pretty much from maybe the last, th you know, last three or four rounds. Definitely from the eight, maybe around the eighth round on. You know, the uh, cuts were opening up over his left eye, or is that his right eye? I think a cut opened over his right eye. His left eye was completely shut, uh, was almost completely shut. And so by the time the fight was getting towards the end, Jamal was just teeing off with jabs and straight right hands. Um, but for some reason, Al Bernstein and Steve Farhood kept talking about everything 
that Sergey Devrinchenko was doing so well. And it's just, you know, I, I don't understand. Is it maybe it is that they just have a tendency to overpraise the underdog? But it was at the with in the Jamal Charlo fight with Sergey Devrinchenko, you would have sworn listening to him that Jamal Charlo was losing the fight. So, you know, that <laughs> I don't get these announcers, man. There's nothing wrong with just saying what's going to ha- you know, what's happening in the fight, man. But I think what Al Bernstein is doing is he's like judging. He comes up with this criteria of how what he thinks somebody, the fighter needs to do. And he's just stuck on this script about what they need to do. And it, because he's so scripted, he's not able to actually, you know, keep track of what's going on in the fight. Because while he was talking about what a wonderful job Sergey Devrinchenko was doing and how, you know, he was, uh, you know, listening to his coach Andre Razier and starting to change angles and switch angles. And, you know, and how he was getting closer and closer. It's like, man, the whole time you're talking about this, he is getting more beat up and more beat up and more beat up. But, hey, man, that's just that's just how uh, Showtime calls the fight. You know, at least Polly Malignaggi. I can at least take solace that Polly Malignaggi wasn't on there. You know, I can go with that. But, you know, so moving forward for Jamal Charlo, a couple things, you know, people can stop talking about Jamal Charlo being um, Jamal Charlo being unproven because this fight here proved that he is an elite 160 pound fighter because he got rid of Sergey Devrinchenko much more easily than uh, Gennady Golovkin did for sure. And if I recall correctly with with um, Daniel Jacobs, Daniel Jacobs didn't inflict nearly that amount of damage on Sergey Devrinchenko. Really and truthfully, man, they could have stopped that. They could have, well, I wouldn't say they could have stopped it because he was always fighting back. But, you know, it was, I mean, his face really was becoming a mask. (laughs) You know, and if that was the old school 15-round fight, man, they probably would have stopped it just for the amount of punishment that dude was taking. Because he was just getting hit with everything but the kitchen sink. And, you know, also, besides just the level of competition or competitor that, the type of competitor that Sergey Devrinchenko is, if you just looked at how Jamal Charlo looked in the ring with Sergey Devrinchenko, man, it's amazing that I find it amazing that Jamal Charlo can actually get down to 160 pounds and how he ever got down to 154 pounds. But I mean, like he said in an interview, maybe that is one of his special talents, but I can definitely see why a guy like, like Gennady Golovkin wants no part of, of, um, of Jamal Charlo, man. Jamal Charlo will stop Gennady Golovkin. And I don't think that that, I mean, it'll be a good fight, but I think he stops Gennady Golovkin because he's not just a strong fighter. He's also a very intelligent fighter, a very patient fighter. He listens to his coach. He listens to his coach well. So I just don't see, um, I don't see these other guys at 160 pounds beating him, um, including, including Demetrius Andre. Because the way that he goes, the he's just such an intelligent, um, he's an intelligent pressure fighter, man. He can fight on the, he can fight well on the inside. Um, he's got a nice chin. I saw Sergey Devrinchenko catch him on multiple occasions in that in that fight, um, but he, you know just took him flush, kept on going. But the size advantage that he's going to have over these other well over these other middleweights is just you know. I think it's going to be too much for these guys, man. But what is actually going to happen after this fight? You know, I'm not 100% convinced that um I'm not 100% convinced that the mainstream boxing media is going to give Jamal uh, Charlo the credit that he deserves. They're probably going to just, you know, they're hanging out there waiting to talk about how bad the pay-per-view did or talk about the numbers and say, "Oh, that proves that he's not a star." Um but, you know, in the situation where people are saying that, that is them just starting with the, just justifying, you know, a position that they already had based on whatever facts, you know, actually pop up. You know, they're just going to bend them and twist them around to make it, you know, suit it. Right. So he didn't knock out Sergey Devrinchenko and Sergey Devrinchenko had had just had, you know, two difficult wars with, you know, or he had lost two out of the last three fights. You're going to hear all kind of all kind of different reasons why not to give Jamal Charlo, uh, Jamal Charlo that credit. I would love if it, if this pay-per-view did terrific numbers, 
but I'm not expecting that it did. I'm thinking that it's probably just a case where it's going to, they're going to be able to earn, you know, some extra money and take, you know, uh, allow these guys to have, uh, you know, to take a chance on themselves. And, you know, if the pay-per-views come out very, very well, they make a lot of money. If not, they got their guarantee and we got a great fight. But anyway, that's my take on the matter. You let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.